Hello everyone, welcome to The Red's Take. It's that time of the week where I go over my top 10 college football games of the week and my predictions for them. So let's get started with the biggest game of the week between number 7, Tennessee, and number 12, Georgia, who are 10-point favorites, primetime ABC game. I can't believe it comes down to this, but this is the Bulldogs' last chance. Georgia has to win out now to make the playoffs. For Tennessee, if they win, the Knicks start making reservations to the SC title game. Um, the last time Georgia lost a big game, Alabama, they would bounce back in their next game against Texas. So could we see some situation here where they, you know, lost a big game on this and now bounce back here? And I think they will. I feel like they'll play the right intensity and get the close win and keep their season alive. Also, it helps that Tennessee quarterback Nico Yamayava may not get clear for from concussion protocol by then. And if he's out, Tennessee has no chance. So I say Georgia 23-13. Number two, you got Arizona State versus 16 Kansas State. Or eight and a half point favorites. That's a primetime ESPN game. Like, like the SEC, the Big 12 race is wide open. If Colorado can somehow drop a game, then both of these teams are in the mix to make the title game. The lose of this game will be eliminated from the Big 12 title race. I like the Wildcats in this game. They're coming off a bye week, so I expect them to be sharp and motivated after suffering their embarrassing loss to Houston two weeks ago. Also, the Sun Devils had trouble stopping the run against UCF, and Kansas State will have nothing more to make this a rushing contest. Um, I have Kansas State winning 28-20. to Number three, you got 23 Missouri versus 21 South Carolina. 14-point favorites, so 415 game SC Network. Missouri head coach Eli Drinkwood has said in a post-game interview after the Oklahoma game last week that they're still in the playoff hunt. Well, he can keep telling himself that, and he can keep telling his team that, but that statement couldn't be further from the truth, and his team may get a big wake-up call against the Gamecocks this Saturday. South Carolina is dangerous, especially at home, and I don't feel Missouri could put up enough points against a good South Carolina defense to get the win. Therefore, the Tigers will lose and have reality set in for them that they're not a top-10 caliber, playoff caliber type of team that they were last year. So I have South Carolina winning 27-13. to Number four, you got 20 Clemson, or 12 and a half point favorites versus Pittsburgh, new ESPN game. With Miami losing, Clemson's back in the mix to make it to the AC Tau game. Since their last two games are not conference games, that means if they win this game, they just need Miami to slip up one more time, and they're in. After starting the season on fire, Pittsburgh has fallen off a cliff the last two games. I would think the Panthers would play hard to avoid the season becoming just an okay season, but I don't, but I don't think the Panthers get their issues fixed against Clemson. The Tigers find a way to get their win, First win against an automatic bowl team. I have Clemson winning 27 to 20. Next, you got, for number five, you got Cincinnati um, versus Iowa State or 10 point favorites, uh, primetime Fox game. Cincinnati is in trouble right now. They have lost back to back games, and if they lose this game, they play a ranked Kansas State team, probably lost, and will have to beat TCU at home just to get ball eligible, which is no guarantee. For Iowa State, it seemed like they were destined to reach the big total game. Now, after back-to-back -back losses, they're in desperation mode. Iowa State's defense has not been playing well at all, um, like it was early on in the season. They struggled to stop the run, and for some reason, their secondary was the big issue last week against Kansas. Uh, but Cincinnati loves to run the ball, and if Cincinnati could become a passing team, then that's where the Cyclones can force turnovers and maybe take advantage. Um, if, if for some reason it becomes a shootout, I like the Cyclones and the shootouts. Um, to win to win that battle and keep themselves alive in the Big 12 tie race. I have them winning 28 to 23. Number six, you get three Texas who are 12 point favorites versus Arkansas, new ABC game. The Razorbacks should make it to a bowl game even if they lose this game. However, since it's a rival game, they would love to spoil the Longhorns' playoff hopes because this lo a loss for the Longhorns here would indeed in fact spoil their hopes. Um, I feel they would try to bounce back coming off a of bye week after the embarrassing loss to Ole Miss. However, I feel their defense won't be able to slow down the Longhorns' offense. If Arkansas can somehow cover the spread, that would be a moral victory for them. Number seven, you got number one Oregon for 14-point favorites versus Wisconsin. Primetime NBC game. If Wisconsin loses this game, then they have to go to Nebraska and beat their and then beat their rival Minnesota or beat the rival Minnesota at home in order to make a bowl game. That's not exactly something the Badgers want to rely on. The problem is I don't think their defense will slow down Oregon's offense. I do think it's a close game in the first half, and then the Ducks start to pull away in the second half. Um, and I have Oregon winning 31-17. Number eight, you got Baylor, two and a half point favorites versus West Virginia, uh, 4 p.m. ESPN2 game. Both teams have a manageable schedule going forward, so both teams should get bowl eligible at some point, but just in case, you know it's best to get bowl eligible while you can. Um, I think this will be a shootout. It may come down to who has the ball last. 
Since West Virginia has actually not played well at home this season, I'll take the Bears to get the close win off their bye week to make a bowl game and potentially save head coach Dave Romanda's job after he was on the hot seat for the beginning of the year. I have Baylor winning 38-34. Number nine, you got Virginia versus eight Notre Dame, or 23 and a half point favorites in a 3.30 NBC game. It's a good thing Virginia beat Pittsburgh last week because their final three games are brutal. You know, or Notre Dame this week, and then you got to host SMU next week, which is a loss. And then, so, and then they play their rival Virginia Tech on the road. So for Notre Dame, they know if they lose one more time, they will miss the playoffs. So I think this, I think this could be a closer game than what the odds makers believe. But in the end, that Notre Dame defense will be too much for Virginia to overcome, in my opinion. So I have Notre Dame winning 27 to 16. And last but not least, you got Boston College versus 14 SMU, who are 19 half point favorites, 338 ESPN game. We'll see if the bye week messed up SMU's rhythm because that's the only hope Boston College has of pulling off an upset here. SMU has shown that the only way to beat them is to force multi like three plus turnovers against them. Even if Boston College can do that, I feel their offense is not dynamic enough to take advantage. The Mustangs can slow down Boston College's run game to get the big win and remain in first in the conference. I have SMU winning 30 to 13. So thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel and turn about me. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful weekend of football.